This is the Morro Bay Estuary. It's the place where fresh water from the Los Osos and Choro Creeks meets with water coming from the ocean. It's a winning combination. It makes Morro Bay one of California's richest natural habitats. Year round, Morro Bay residents surf waves, take in rays, and may even enjoy the friendly competition of a Sunday regatta. Speaking of races, you might say the bay's been hosting them for far longer than we've been around. So long as the rains are heavy enough and the creeks remain flowing, a particularly grueling race takes place here each winter. Have you heard of it? The players aren't people, they're fish. I'm speaking, of course, of the legendary steelhead, which to rightfully earn its name, must somehow escape the freshwater creeks it was born in and make its way into the saltwater ocean. Talk about tough. One of the things that makes them so spectacular is that genetically, steelhead are the same species of fish as the entirely freshwater rainbow trout. What sets them apart is the steelhead's ironclad resolve to leave freshwater and enter the ocean. This also means the steelhead is of particular importance to us. Because it needs multiple healthy habitats to thrive, the steelhead plays a valuable part as an indicator of general water quality throughout the watershed. The steelhead trout, are the, they're the iconic species. I mean, they come back in and they're an indicator of water quality health and watershed health. Steelhead were once plentiful and well known for spawning in Morro Bay's creeks. They're a part of our history and remain even today an aspect of local culture. But this species is disappearing from our watershed, in part because of us and the effect we've had on their habitat. This is why Morro Bay National Estuary Program has teamed up with other local organizations to help ensure these steelhead survive. Part of what we do is water quality monitoring. Uh, a great deal of that monitoring is conducted by volunteers. It's these community members who really form the backbone of the estuary program. Together, we're working hard to protect steelhead habitat so that we can bring these fish back to Morro Bay in greater numbers. Well, basically, on these bioassessment surveys, we're coming out and looking at habitat. We have a rock team looking at channel substrate, bug team collecting the bugs and looking at canopy cover. The types of bugs you find in a creek can be excellent measures of habitat quality. Bugs which are intolerant to pollutants can't survive in dirty water. So if we find these bugs alive, we know that water quality is good. So we are pretty late in the season. It's August. So a lot of the macroinvertebrates have hatched. There are a couple exoskeletons of some stoneflies here. Pretty cool, they basically just crawled out of their skin and flew away. Growing steelhead also happen to feed on these types of macroinvertebrates. So by studying the insects found in creeks, we can determine how well the environment can support fish. Some of the more sensitive macroinvertebrate species that we see are the stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies. Some of the more tolerant species that we see are the mosquito larva and dragonfly larva. This map of the watershed shows each creek, along with its unique bug score. Creeks that support healthy populations of bugs are color-coded green. Yellow creeks ranked fair, and orange creeks scored a poor rating. Habitat in these creeks might lack some of the crucial features that fish and bugs need to thrive. While trout, lucky enough to rear in green creeks, have access to clean water and a gourmet feast of flies, little steelhead with full bellies can still be very much at risk. Steelhead need oxygen to breathe, just like humans. Here we are. This is how we monitor for temperature and dissolved oxygen. But in creek environments with little water, concentrations of the gas can fluctuate greatly, and with warmer water comes less oxygen. So that's one of the reasons we're looking at canopy cover too, because at a nice shady reach, the water is gonna be colder and there's a higher potential for increased dissolved oxygen levels. The blue line shows oxygen levels in a local creek over the course of a year. 
the levels are safe here and don't fall into the red danger zone. Though steelhead are few in number, it's in habitats like these where baby trout maintain a fighting chance. So issues like that are key for us to make sure that we're finding where there's small pockets of, of water that stays there throughout the year. Those specific habitats are essential for protection. If all goes well, in a few short years, these adolescent fish will make their way downstream where something remarkable will happen. And then they slowly move down into the estuarine system and they go through a physiological process that enables them to breathe salt water instead of, of fresh water. Fish are amazing, still that are amazing, and they, they are actually able to find the creek that they were born in, their natal creek, and come back to this very same creek to spawn. After several years in the ocean, and having finally earned their title steelhead, these trout return home to start the life cycle anew. For these few lucky fish, the struggle has been worth it and they've made it to the finish line. But the fate of future generations is uncertain, and it truly seems that the steelhead survival rests atop our shoulders. Lack of water in creeks can jeopardize steelhead populations. Fish may not survive the long summer months if the creek goes dry, and might be physically unable to complete their journey upstream to lay their eggs. Whether your water comes from a reservoir, creek or well, water that's wasted means less water for the fish. Water quantity is a significant issue um, and in some points that's really out of our hands. You know, if we're in a sustained drought like we are now, we've had the worst winter on record. This is, you know, something that's going to be potentially part of our our life from here on out where we don't get the amount of rainfall that we're used to. We're in we could be in climate change. We're needing to look at other, other ways to reduce our water use. The estuary program works with partners to create water conservation projects, from rainwater catchment to gray water systems, and outreach to the community on how to be water wise. A recent project at Cal Poly allows them to save up to 260,000 gallons of water each year. We did a rainwater harvesting system on their bull test unit, which actually captures water off of the rooftops and diverts it down into four large storage tanks. For the homeowner, smaller scale projects like installing a home gray water system or attaching rain barrels to downspouts can provide valuable outdoor irrigation and help conserve water. These fish have adapted over the years to, to deal with the Mediterranean climate and survive and persist and they keep coming back year after year. They're kind of like the canary in the coal mine, you know? I mean, realistically, that's what we're really trying to save is, is the iconic species themselves. While the steelhead situation is dire, the effect of our combined efforts is incredibly powerful. If we each do our part to protect water quality and conserve this resource, we can save the steelhead. And together our actions can help this species thrive.